It's here, ladies and gentlemen. Words cannot describe how excited I am for football. I could literally cry, but I am going to go through and give you our updated top 30 running backs for week one. Now that we have the injury reports, now that we have a better idea with these matchups, starting off tier one, we're going to go CMC and Austin Eckler. Yeah, I'm going to go Eckler over CMC here, just given the fact that if you're going to look at the game environments, right now you have the second highest scoring game of the week, according to Las Vegas Sportsbooks, being the Miami Dolphins and the Los Angeles Chargers, whereas CMC and the Pittsburgh Steelers supposedly Supposed to be in a very low scoring contest. I mean, right now, the Chargers Dolphins game over under 51 points. Whereas, if you're going to be looking at the Steelers 49ers, they're down there at 41. Both these running backs are great. You can't go wrong. Now, tier two, we are going to have Saquon Barkley leading the way with Barkley. You have the receiving down roll. You have a good matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Hell, Nick Chubb at four. You're going to be looking at a running back against the Cincinnati Bengals that most likely will be trailing the game, but it will be interested to see what his receiving down roll looks like with no Kareem Hunt. I know you have Ford there, but are we really excited about Jerome Ford this season? Now, Tony Pollard in that same game with Saquon Barkley, we're going to be jumping up here. These rankings are going to be for a full PPR league. Now, if you're going to be playing in a half PPR format, then at that point, you should probably be going and pivoting over to like Derrick Henry. And obviously, if you're in a non PPR league, then Derrick Henry moves up all the way to the top tier. Now, with Henry, tough matchup against the New Orleans Saints. This is a running back that is going to be playing behind the worst offensive line in the NFL. And to be honest, I'm worried about the overall offense. I mean, it's interesting to see how they're going to use DeAndre Hopkins, but obviously the worry is that maybe Hopkins is like the Julio Jones whenever he goes to Tennessee. Now, Josh Jacobs at seven is also a running back that we have to worry about the offense that he's playing in. I mean, you have Jimmy Garoppolo there. It's a matchup against the Denver Broncos where we're not too excited about the overall game environment, but we'll be interested to see how Jimmy Garoppolo performs in Vegas. Now, our last guy in this year will be Bijan Robinson, and I expect that Bijan Robinson will be a tier one running back for the majority of the season for us. Y'all know going into the year, I had Bijan Robinson only ranked behind Christian McCaffrey in our overall rankings. And I understand a lot of people are going to scream saying, Mason, you're way too low on Bijan, blah, blah, blah. In reality, it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. We know that we're starting all these guys at the very top end. And I do want to just put like a little disclaimer out there with all these rookies that we're pumped about the long term with. You do not have to be starting them the exact week that they break out. Now, of course, Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, someone we'll talk about a little later on. These are exceptions to the rule. You can go through. You can confidently start the rookies there. However, when it comes to like the wide receivers, when it comes to the tight ends, don't think you need to start Sam Laporta. Don't think you need to start Dalton Kincaid, Jordan Addison, Quinton Johnston week one, Zay Flowers week one. Those are players that you want to wait to see the breakout from. And then once we see the breakout, we can start them the following week. With Bijan Robinson, even if I think he's the running back too, in the long term, I don't need to rank him there until we actually see him on the football field for the first time in his NFL career. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to be going Travis Etienne. Y'all know I'm a big Etienne guy. I mean, he's our most drafted round four player in underdog drafts this offseason. I expect him to increase his role as an overall pass catcher. We'll be interested to see who gets the red zone looks between Etienne and Tank Bigsby. Now, Joe Mixon against the Cleveland Browns here at 10. I know a lot of people are worried about Burrow's availability week one. I'm not. I mean, I'm operating under the assumption that Joe Burrow will play. Now, keep in mind, if Burrow does not play, then at that point, 100%, we need to go through and we need to pivot over to, I want to say, another running back like Ramadre Stevenson over Joe Mixon, right? But if you're looking at the spread of this Cincinnati Bengals and Cleveland Browns game, they have the Bengals as two and a half point favorites. And I think that Las Vegas knows more about Joe Burrow's availability week one than we know just off the top of our head. So if they're putting the Bengals as favorites in this game. Joe Burrow will be playing, ladies and gentlemen. Now, with Ramadre at 11, obviously, this is a full PBR format. I mean, with Ramadre Stevenson, you're excited about the usage as a pass catcher against the Philadelphia Eagles, where the Eagles should be in the lead the majority of this game, where Ramadre just will rack up those receptions. And then at 12, we are going to be going with Kenneth Walker. I think similar to what we have with some of these other teams at the very top, Kenneth Walker in the Seattle Seahawks should be able to lead the majority 
read the game against the Los Angeles Rams, especially if you have no Cooper Cup. I have no idea how the hell you expect the Rams to move the ball down the field. I mean, right now, the spread of this game is going to be five points favoring the Seattle Seahawks in some books. Others are going to have it five and a half. I think it's going to be a blowout. And I think that the Seahawks look to run the ball in the second half and not worried about the Charbonnet usage in the short term, even if Charbonnet expands his role in the long term. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we are going to have J.K. Dobbins here. With Dobbins, yes, he's going to be moving up these rankings for us. Beautiful matchup against the Houston Texans. I mean, this is a game that at the end of the day, we know the Baltimore Ravens are going to crush, right? They are 10-point favorites. If you look at underdog fantasy, the J.K. Dobbins total pick him for his yardage this week is going to be at 71.5, which is a lot higher than our next guy, Underdog only has Alexander Madison at 57 and a half rushing yards for his pick in week one. But to be fair with Alexander Madison, I think it's a pretty good matchup. I mean, regardless of what you think about the Bucks defense, if you just think about it from a game environment perspective, I mean, this is going to be a spot where the Bucks are going to have a very hard time staying competitive with the Minnesota Vikings. The Bucs should be one of the worst teams in the NFL this next year. And I think the Vikings should be able to run the ball in the second half when they are six point favorites over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, Aaron Jones will be our next guy at 15. With Aaron Jones, super interested to see what we have from Jordan Love in this offense in particular. The matchup against the Bears is a little bit different than what we've seen in years past, where we know years past, you start every single Green Bay Packer that you have against Chicago. But now, I mean, maybe it's a little bit of a different story when you have Rodgers. Still, you can start Aaron Jones. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb, and we are going to rank Jameer Gibbs here at 16. The more that I look at this overall matchup, the more that I'm getting excited about the fact that they are just going to have a zillion points scored in this game. If you look at Las Vegas over-unders right now, you actually have the Kansas City Chiefs and Detroit Lions as the highest scoring game of the week at 54.5 points. If you look at implied team totals, the Detroit Lions are supposed to score 24 points this next week, and they're most likely going to have to be throwing the ball in the second half as the Chiefs are favored by about 4.5 to 6.5 points. Obviously, it's going to be a larger spread because we don't have the clarity on Kelsey right away. If you're starting Gibbs, you probably hope that Kelsey plays because you do want the Lions to be trailing in the second half and have to push the pace of play and have to actually throw the ball which obviously is the receiving back in this offense Najee Harris at 17 will be a running back that I'm very worried about I mean I think you could say the 49ers have a top three defense in the NFL this next season and the only teams to have a lower implied team total than the Pittsburgh Steelers according to Las Vegas Sportsbooks this week are the Tennessee Titans the Carolina Panthers the Houston Texans and the Arizona Cardinals so not a good spot for Najee Harris I mean underdog only has him at 16 and a half total yards for his pick em line week one so honestly, I even kind of want to move Jamal Williams ahead of him. Now with Jamal, he should also be playing in another low scoring game where the over under in that game is only going to be 41 points. But in the case of Jamal Williams, you have Condre Miller banged up. You also have no Alvin Kamara. I mean, hell, he led the NFL in rushing touchdowns last year. I mean, I will be interested to see what the red zone rule is for Taysom Hill, because if Taysom still is being used in red zone packages, that could cap the overall upside that you get from Jamal Williams in terms of his touchdown ability. But as we go over to our next tier, I want to remind y'all, please make sure you take advantage of this while you still can. Underdog Fantasy has a special pick him up Thursday night. Patrick Mahomes more than less than half a passing yard against the Detroit Lions. On top of that, if you use promo code FLOCK on Underdog, you're going to get an additional special pick him more than less than half a passing yard for Josh Allen against the Jets on Monday night. I've never seen Underdog have two special pick ems the same week, but if you're new to Underdog Fantasy, they even have a third for you. They have an additional mystery special pick them on top of that literally have never seen anything like this please make sure you're taking advantage with promo code flock you're also going to get a 100 deposit match up to 100 you're going to get our 2023 fantasy football rankings and a free trial to flockfantasy.com where you can find all of our premium content now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go Miles Sanders at 19. With Sanders, the matchup against Atlanta is good in that they can stay competitive, right? I think the Carolina Panthers should be dogs in the majority of games that they play this next season. And with Sanders, he should expand his role as a pass catcher in comparison to what we've seen in years past with the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts. Last time he was with his coaching staff, they did decide to use Miles Sanders a little bit more as a receiver, especially on third down. But you are primarily wanting him to be in games where they are going to be able to be competitive. Now, David Montgomery is an interesting play here at 20, right? Because if you are looking at David Montgomery, this is a running back that you want in games where the Detroit Lions will be leading and games where the Detroit Lions will be able to push the ball down the field. 
Now, I'm a little bit more excited about Montgomery with the possibility that Travis Kelsey is not going to play because if Kelsey does not play, I think the Detroit Lions have a chance to actually keep this game close. And if you look at the underdog pick them right now on Montgomery, they have them at 70 and a half total yards against the Chiefs. Obviously, the Chiefs are missing a key defensive piece as well. And Montgomery should be stepping into the Jamal Williams role in this offense, or at least that's what I'm initially projecting. Now, Damian Pierce will be our next running back at 21. And full transparency, I would rather have Damian Pierce than a lot of these other running backs ahead of him from a season-long perspective. But very similar to Najee Harris, Damian Pierce is going to be in one of the worst matchups of the NFL this week, where right now, if you look at the Houston Texans and their implied team total, they're only supposed to score about 17 and a half points against the Baltimore Ravens, where they are nine and a half to 10 point dogs, depending on the sports book that you're looking at. So it's going to be a very tough game environment for Pierce. Now, Raheem Mostert will be our next running back at 22. This is a running back that's going to be in that high scoring game with the Chargers versus Dolphins. Like we've said, we want as many running backs as we can possibly get, as many wide receivers as we can possibly get in this game. That's why we do have Austin Eckler as our RB1 at this point. Now, with that being said, I'm still not a massive Raheem Mostert fan. This is the perfect situation, right? If Najee Harris was in this situation, if James Conner was in this situation, if Damian Pierce, David Montgomery, Miles Sanders, you name the running back, if they were in here, I would have them way higher than 22. I'm just not a super big monster guy because one, it looks like Devon A-Chain going to play. If he, A-Chain plays, I think he has the receiving down role. Historically speaking, monster hasn't been used as a pass catcher. Two, he is a 31-year-old running back that has seen one game in his NFL career with 20 or more carries. Those factors make me very nervous to go out there and rank him as like an RB1 this week, even if the matchup is beautiful, even if this is the exact spot that you would want him in. Now, with that being said, this ranking is based off Devon A-Chain playing week one. If Devon A-Chain is still not good to go with the shoulder, then at that point, we would be looking at moving he mustered. Not even to the top of this tier, but to the tier above as well. Because it would be very easy to project him to go out there and get 20 touches in a perfect game environment. So please make sure you're monitoring the Devon A chain health. And honestly, he could slide up as high as I want to say like RB 16 ish in these rankings if A chain's out. Now, our next guy will be James Conner at 23. I understand James Conner's a running back that everybody likes. He's a bell cow option. And if he was in Miami, he would be like a top 12 running back. But the issue is he's not Miami. He's on the worst team in the NFL, in the worst offense in the NFL with a bad matchup as well. He's with the Cardinals who look like they're going to try to go 0-17 to get the number one overall pick this next season. To illustrate how bad this game environment is going to be, the Arizona Cardinals are projected to score 15.25 points according to Vegas Sportsbooks. You get 15 points out of this Cardinals offense. This game has the lowest over-under of any game of the week at 38 points. So it should be a super low scoring game environment where even if James Conner goes out there and sees 16 carries and five targets, I just don't know if we're going to get any yardage with that. I don't know if we have any touchdown upside. Now, our next tier will be led off with Isaiah Pacheco going up against Detroit. Pacheco, it's an interesting spot, right? I mean, maybe they look to run the ball a little bit more if you don't have Kelsey, but maybe this team has a more difficult time picking up first downs, pushing the ball downfield. So it's kind of a balancing act where you don't know if you love that Kelsey's out. You don't know if you hate it. It's probably kind of a neutral wash. I mean, with Pacheco, I think that he is going to be the red zone back for the Kansas City Chiefs this next year. Obviously, you have touchdown upside when you're playing in KC. And the Chiefs are projected to score the most points of any team this week. Now, Brian Robinson will be our next running back at 25. I actually really like starting Brian Robinson this week. I mean, this is a perfect matchup for him going up against the Arizona Cardinals where the commanders are seven and a half point favorites. I personally would imagine that Brian Robinson's going to be the first and second down back, whereas Antonio Gibson is more the receiving down back in this offense. So this is more a Brian Robinson game, whereas if the commanders were going up against like the Chiefs, right there, you'd be a little bit more inclined to play Antonio Gibson. But yeah, I think Brian Robinson should be in a very good spot. And then with our next guy, James Cook, very interested to see what the actual split's going to be between Cook and Damian Harris. Now, Cook has a lot of upside in that this is an elite level offense. This is a running back that's a great pass catcher. And this is a team that wants to throw the ball a lot. But at the same time, there's an outside chance that Damian Harris has the red zone role in this offense. And if that were to be the case, that will limit the overall upside that you get from James Cook. So do you want to see that split between Harris and Cook in this week? And it's a tough matchup against the Jets. Now, our next guy will be Khalil Herbert going up against the Green Bay Packers. With Herbert, this is a running back that projects to be the starter in Chicago. 
But just because he projects to be the starter in Chicago, that doesn't mean we know the exact split that's going to be here in this backfield. If he's the starter, does that mean we are going to get 50% of the touches going to Khalil Herbert, then 30% going to Deonta Foreman, 20% going to Roshan Johnson? Does it mean that Justin Fields is going to take all the rushing touchdowns at the goal line? So it's going to be another spot similar to the Buffalo Bills and James Cook where we're really going to be having our eyes in on the Chicago Bears backfield and what percentage of snaps and touches overall Khalil Herbert's able to take control of week one. Now Rashad White will be our next running back and I understand people are going to say that we're too low on Rashad White and maybe we are, right? But at the end of the day, we haven't really seen Rashad White actually be a three-down running back at the NFL level. At the end of the day, we don't know how bad this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is going to be. So there's an outside chance that this is a bad offense where we have the uncertain role for the starting running back. It is a spot that I would probably rather just sit here and wait and see what we end up getting from Rashad White and then look to start him in week two. But I mean, there is nobody else in this backfield. So I mean, on paper, it looks like White's going to get every touch. I just don't feel like we need to go out there and start him because how bad this team's going to be. Now, our next two RBs, starting off with Dalvin Cook, I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to expect. Week one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be fully honest with you. Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall this week, I expect to split close to 50-50. I would assume that Dalvin Cook is going to be the RB1 at the beginning portion of the season. With that being said, I still clearly prefer the long-term upside of Brees Hall in your fantasy football league. I think as the season goes on, Brees Hall is going to slowly but surely expand his role in this offense and Dalvin Cook will fade away. Now, if we combine that with the fact that this is a very tough matchup going up against the Buffalo Bills, where this will be one of the very few games where the New York Jets actually aren't favored, I think it would be easy to just say, let's avoid both of the Jets running backs this week get the clarity on them, and next week when it's a much better matchup, we can then determine who we are wanting to start. But I think that's all we have for you. Again, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for checking out this video. If you have not done so already, go down there, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football, and make sure before it's too late, you can take advantage of these special pickums that you have week one on Underdog Fantasy. I've never seen more than two special pickums in the same week, but they have right now Patrick Mahomes more than less than half a passing yard against the Detroit Lions. They also have Josh Allen more than less than half a passing yard against the New York Jets on Monday night. And on top of that, if you are new to Underdog Fantasy, there's an additional mystery special pick you can take advantage of. That's only with promo code FLOCK, plus you're going to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. You're also going to get our 2023 Fantasy Football Rankings and a free trial to FLOCKFANTASY.com where you can find all our premium content. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day and really hope that we get to see you out in the live stream later tonight.